All right, what is going on everybody? I'm here with a video talking about my diesel heater build. And if you found my channel uh, because of diesel heaters, uh, I don't primarily do diesel heater content. I don't really test products uh, when it comes to this sort of thing. Uh, but this has kind of been a, a small project of mine that I've been working on through the fall uh, into uh, the winter uh, because we primarily camp um, during the fall and winter months. So uh, typically uh, when we have camped before, we have used propane to be our heating solution. So we use a big buddy heater. Uh, we had a tent that looks like this. And uh, with that tent, it had a annex room. So we would put the big buddy heater um, down at the lower level and it would heat uh, the tent all evening uh, into the night. We would use a 20 pound tank. Worked really well. Uh, obviously we switched to a clamshell type tent and we needed to find a different type of solution uh, to stay warm. Uh, so I started researching diesel heaters and uh, I tried a diff couple different ones and uh, some of the diesel heaters that I purchased uh, they worked well. Uh, we had a Vivor unit. Uh, we had, I actually had two Vivor units. I sold one uh, to a friend. And now this is my H calorie unit that I have modified uh, quite a bit. I've changed a few things out. Um, the original H calorie heater that was inside, I had some sort of an issue with uh, the unit, the actual heater, heater inside of the, the box had some sort of a problem. I think maybe from shipment. Uh, the fan had some sort of an issue and eventually it it went um, <clears throat> into the garbage. Uh, I swapped over the I swapped over the Vivor unit into this and uh, it's been working great. Uh, so overall, uh, I've made a few adjustments uh, that you can already probably tell uh, from just looking at this. Obviously the Rotopax fuel tank and I've got the inlet tube and I'll explain why I added these items um, and changed out a few certain things so uh first the the biggest thing that is attached to this box is the rotopax unit itself now um if you look at this mount this is not a standard rotopax mount but let me tell you i have standard rotopax mounts and uh i got this one for 25 dollars on amazon it's got some really weird name uh, but I guarantee you it comes out of the same Chinese factory that the Rotopax one comes out of. And uh, it, the mount was exactly identical to the OEM Rotopax one. It just has a really stupid name on it. Either way, this is like $25. Now, all the stuff that I'm talking about in this video are going to be in the description. Uh, so feel free to browse down there. And if you want to use a Rotopax mount like this, uh, like I said, um, it's nearly identical. I couldn't find any difference between this one and the Rotopax one. So let's go ahead and uh, talk about the Rotopax unit itself. Now, if you look on the top, uh, diesel heaters typically come with a fuel tank uh, like this, uh, whether the H calorie one had it mounted on the side, it's over there, but it has some diesel in it. So I'm not gonna lift that up, but these are very similar. Standard, uh, I think it's like a five liter. Uh, I don't know if it's a five liter, but I think it's five. Um, either way, it's a standard type of tank that comes with your typical diesel heaters. It's got the pickup uh, line uh, here at the bottom. Now, the thing about this is, um, depending on the one that you got, uh, these could be prone to leaking. This one never leaked, but as you can tell, it's got some uh, fittings and some sealant here. Uh, but overall, it's possible that over time this could uh, leak. If you're just starting out, not that big of a deal. Um, you know, if you're going to use this, uh, you know, every weekend camping and you go out camping almost every weekend, it's definitely something that you want to look at changing out, at least running a brand new tank and putting the pickup too on top. Uh, just so that you won't develop leaks. So that's kind of the thought process here. Um, I have a pickup tube drilled into the stock Rotopax uh, mount. And let me go ahead and kind of, um, I can go ahead and remove this to show you what it looks like. So if we take uh, this lid off and I can kind of just pull that lid off over there, you can see inside there is a long pickup tube 
that goes into the tank, into, into the bottom of the tank uh, through a long metal tube so it picks up at the bottom. So uh, the good thing is obviously the unit sits upright and there's no chance of a leak because um, I didn't drill into the bottom of the case. I didn't drill into the case at all. Uh, so this is a serviceable, replaceable part. Um, I could have probably done a better job. There is a gasket underneath here that sandwiches against the plastic. Um, I might change this out eventually. Uh, I'll see how long this lasts. And uh, But overall, super easy to do. Um, so that is the standard two-gallon Rotopax diesel fuel tank. Now let's go ahead and uh, take this off so that I can fold open uh, the case itself. Okay, so I have pulled uh, the roto packs off. Now, as you can see, I haven't disconnected any of the fuel lines. The length of the fuel line is good enough to pull it off of the side of the case and rotate it off to the side. So if you need to service this at camp, you need to service anything inside, you don't have to disconnect the fuel lines. So that's a big plus. Let's go ahead and open this case up here. Like I said, this is a standard Rotopax mount. I have a couple extra holes because I did decide to change um, the where the Rotopax sat on this case. Uh, because if you take a look, um, obvi well, obviously if this originally was a little bit higher on this mount and it was causing a gap. So when it's full with fuel, it's gonna be a little bit heavier on this side and cause the unit to tip a little bit. So I ended up re-drilling the holes and moved this down so that the base of the diesel heater unit um, is flush with the Rotopack, so it's kind of a one big stand uh, and it doesn't wobble at all. So let's go ahead and open this up. You can see I bolted the, uh, I need to finish bolting this hole down. Um, as you can see, I bolted uh, the Rotopax mount to the inside of the case. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the inside of this h calorie unit now this is not a standard almost all of the parts that were in the original h calorie are gone this is actually a uh, vivor uh, unit uh, for the heating uh, the the heating setup is a vivor unit so this is not the original h calorie setup uh, this is the intake tube this came with the h calorie setup and it fit pretty well into that inlet tube for the intake. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, why I did this. Now, this is a five inch coupler and I've got one right here. I actually had a spare. If you take a look here, this is a five inch coupler that has uh, four screw hole points, uh, super cheap. Um, I think this was like $3 on Amazon. Uh, the reason why I installed this was so that I could put a five inch inlet hose um, into the tent. Now you might be wondering why I decided to do that. Well, if you're at camp and let's say you're in really, really cold temperatures, it's like 20, 10 degrees outside, 15 degrees, the 15 degree air has to come inside, heat itself up, and then go into your tent. Now, obviously, the warmer the air that's coming in, the hotter the air is gonna get. It has to work less hard. It has to work, um, yeah, it has to work less hard uh, to heat up that air to funnel it back into your tent. And it also blocks off uh, the any chances of getting any type of exhaust fume into the unit uh, because you're pulling in fresh air uh, from the top of your tent. So, big plus. Highly recommend, uh, even if it's to the point where you can attach. If you don't recirc, if it's not as cold, uh, you can put a filter on this. This is a standard five inch inlet air intake filter area. So uh, you, if you want, you can get like a small filter to put on here to make sure that the air is clean uh, coming inside here. Now, if we take a look at the exhaust, uh, this is the standard exhaust that comes with the uh, diesel heater however what i have done is i have taken uh, exhaust heat wrap uh, automotive grade heat wrap uh, wrap the actual exhaust itself um, because it, it obviously it does get very very hot uh, there is a diesel fuel line here so i wanted to kind of make sure that everything kind of stays uh, within a, a reasonable temperature inside the box it's probably going to be fine either way um, but it's just something uh, i decided to do 
uh, to keep the heat under control. Now, if you look at the side here, one of the great things about this box is that it comes with this heat shield um, and it's got this exhaust outlet that comes out from the side. I did not add that. That came with this diesel heater unit. Fuel pump is stock. Um, I will say after owning a couple different diesel heaters, it could be hit or miss if your fuel pump does work. Now, typically when I have received a diesel heater unit, it has come with some diesel in it, it seems. It, it seems like they've tested it at, at their facilities uh, before they ship them. However, I did have one unit fail where I had to replace the pump. Now the pumps themselves uh, are not very expensive. You can get a replacement. Let me see, I think I've got the... Uh, you can get a replacement uh, fuel pump. You can get a replacement uh, fuel pump for uh, these units for, for pretty cheap on Amazon. Amazon sells pretty much all the parts. Now, when you're looking at diesel heaters, they're fairly simple to operate. You have the heater itself, you have exhaust, you have an intake tube, fuel pump, fuel filter, which I upgraded. Um, and because these units come with whatever this cheap fuel filter is, you can't really even see inside of it. I upgraded to uh, this fuel fil diesel fuel filter. Uh, it has really high ratings. Um, obviously, this is going to be linked in the description below. But some of the higher end diesel heater units utilize this type of fuel filter. So I upgraded this just for myself. I think it was it was pretty cheap. It wasn't that. I think it was like under twenty bucks to upgrade it. Um, and the other thing is, as you could take a look at the lines, the fuel lines in this unit, it came with this like real squishy green hose and I, there's a lot of debate on uh you know people taking these out and running hard lines um and the hard line that i'm talking about is you should be replacing it with this hard uh, type of hose unit which i did through the entire system uh the reasoning behind that is supposedly the fuel pump can maintain better fuel pressure uh, this will eventually crack over time, cause leaks. Um, also, it, the, the, the unit didn't use any sort of um, clamp like this. Uh, it used some sort of a, like that scissor clamp type deal. I, mine actually out of the box had a couple leaks that I had to take care of. Not that big of a deal. And, and the thing is, if you're, if you're watching this video and you're like, man, this is kind of complicated. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into diesel heaters and Dude, it's really not that difficult. If you're slightly mechanically inclined to work on a car, um, you know, if you can install an intake on a car, uh, you can easily maintain and service a diesel here. Like I said, it's super simple stuff. Um, controller, uh, mine is not connected. Mine originally was connected to the side here with a plate. I kept mine loose just so that um, if it is raining, I can kind of put it somewhere else. I do eventually want to extend this harness uh, so that I can bring this thermostat. I think there is a sensor on this um, and I'm going to uh, extend the harness and uh, bring it into the tent so that I can control so that I can control uh, the temperature while I'm inside the tent. So uh, with that being said, overall uh, that is the majority of what I have upgraded um from this diesel heater unit now i still have some plans for some other things that are coming up in a video and if you're wondering well how can i carry this how can i mount this somewhere uh, i have some really good news because i think it's going to work out really well i don't want to mention it yet just because um there is a chance it might not work but i think it's going to and it's going to be pretty cost effective and it's going to be badass and i think for those of you guys that do go camping have a rig that's set up for camping overlanding whatever you want to call it um it's going to work out really well and it utilizes another product that most of us that go camping already have anyways uh, moving on to some other things i did now the other thing to note is the power on this h calorie unit utilizes this type of plug uh, your diesel heater unit that you buy, unless it's exactly this one, um, might not look like this. But if you do have one that looks like this, uh, this is the standard type of plug that Iceco uses uh, for their refrigerators. Um, so luckily, it usually comes with a standard type of 12-volt uh, type hookup. 
that has a hot and ground that you've got to uh, connect to the diesel heater to run. Um, I use the standard 12 volt Ice, Iceco unit, um, Iceco 12 volt cigarette lighter plug and plug it straight into my uh, battery unit, um, my EcoFlow uh, at night and it, it runs it just fine, has no issues. Uh, I'll leave a link into the description of the one that I just bought. It's gonna be slightly better than the Iceco one. Um, so I plan on using that. So either way, that's my setup. That is this setup. I, I'm fairly, oh, and I did, forgot to mention, I did add this um, seal like foam to kind of add a little bit more weatherproofing. I may add another layer around the side of the case. But overall, this I, I did just kind of add this for the top because if it is sitting outside and it does get rained on, I did want to prevent any water intrusion uh, from coming from the top of the lid. Overall though, that's really all I've changed on this. Um, this H calorie unit I've seen from the last video has been fluctuating from 250 to $350. I, I think someone said that the price increased like a hundred bucks. I don't know. It looked like it went back then down to 250. Uh, so I think it's still an excellent buy as a starter unit just because it comes in prepackaged in this box and you can mod one yourself, uh, keep one as a spare up to you. Hopefully this video was informative and helpful. If you guys have any questions, drop them below. I appreciate all the new subscribers. Uh, like I said, I typically don't do videos like this. I'm not like any type of diesel heater tester. So some of the information I've provided here, uh, I don't know, might not be the most up to date. I, I don't know. But overall, when I posted this on the diesel heater forums, uh, I got a lot of kudos, which I appreciated. Uh, I spent a lot of my own personal time uh, to get this unit built. So hopefully this video was helpful for you. And like I said, if you have any questions, uh, leave a comment below and then I'll go ahead and answer it for you. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.